Look at that. Button, right. button time. Oh, I see a, a red. Oh, is it really one? Okay. Chad, what episode is this, Chad? Hey, it is episode number 141. On um, a Tuesday, I was arrested. Well, cool. Welcome, how's, kids. How, how's everybody's uh, morning, day? Pretty good. So far? Very good. Mm. Very good. N- nice little weekend. Congratulations nice little to Annabelle and Tyler. Yeah, that's right. And uh, Hawk Winery, Santa Fe. What, mm-hmm. a, what a day. Very nice place. Wine, wine the day away. Spend a day in Santa Fe. Hey, hey, hey. I, th- I think Chad had a glass of wine and I had a, uh, a, a wine-based cocktail, which was very interesting. Wine-based. Yeah. yeah. How, how was, was the wine, Chad? It was good. Yeah, I was, Eric and I were talking about this when, when we were standing at the bars that I'm not really, even though wine was the first uh, alcoholic beverage I learned to like, I'm not a wine aficionado in the same way I am beer. Um, so I I don't I was like this tastes good I don't know <laughs> what's good what's bad yeah so, well it's it, it's good if you like it did yeah. you like it I did there you go it's good question answered there you go now it's uh now it's episode one forty five <laughs> excellent I took it um yeah so good 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 uh, good few weeks we've been uh, we've been trying to uh, get back in the van get out of the van. Get into the, it's a, it seemed to be nonstop. Um, uh, just if, for those who don't know, we have a we have a, a we got a, had a great uh, write up. Um, Saturday yeah. was it Saturday or Sunday? It came out. Uh, I think it was just yesterday that it came out. I mean, at least, okay. at least, at least so when four, you posted it, I think. Yeah, so four, four days ago. Um, so <laughs> we had a, a yeah gr- great write up, and you can see it on our. Well, we posted it just about everywhere, but. Mm-hmm. Um, you could put a link in that today, but yeah, great um, uh, write up by the London, the London Celtic punks. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I put it in my story on Instagram, and, and they they replied to me there this morning. You know, saying thank, oh thank, you know, thanking me for for pub, or for pushing it, but also it said again, it's like we really enjoy the album. It's like I think in part because it's so unlike anything else that's sent to them. Um, Meaning in this genre, I think that the, the so-called <laughs> genre that we're that we're a part of. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm. He was he just basically, he gushed over the record. I mean, there, there wasn't a song he didn't like, and um, anyway, the, the, there was the there was the 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 joke. Well, I, I I thought it was funny, but I called the song Segway. I called it Wagon Wheel because Wagon Wheel is one of these songs that's. <clears throat> It's it, it it it's maybe the free bird of Irish music. Maybe mm-hmm. I don't know if it's if it's that bad or if it's that if it's you know that lower level. Yeah, but um, if it's that bad or worse. Yeah, yeah. I, I think for alt country too, it's just overplayed. Definitely, definitely a country yeah. a country yeah. song. Which I have a funny story about about that song. I think it's oh, funny. Okay, but let's, uh, let let Patrick finish his thought. Yeah, yeah. So the 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 that that was that was the joke um so 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 you see all these songs moonshiner and all these heavy you know fast songs and yeah you know th- they know that they're not going to get a no name ever ta, 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 ta. they know that's not going to happen but the my, my again my, my my silliness would 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 uh it led me to call that song Wagon Wheel. So people look at the record and go, oh, what would they do that for? And then when they hear it, they go, well, that's not Wagon And it's the furthest yeah. thing from Wagon Wheel that you're going to get, I think. Yeah. And so uh, that was the only one that seemed to confuse them. <laughs> yeah. You know, they didn't really mention it. You know, it was the, uh, it was He's, that. It, it, he he right? said something like, I don't know if Blackridge is aware that that song is maligned here. <laughs> but he said, well, fortunately, it's not that song. It's it's." Uh, but it seemed mm. like it, he didn't really get that we put the title there as a joke, you know. Yeah, I, I, he totally didn't get it. And I, I was, I was, I was wondering on the drive home from Hawk Winery yesterday. I was like, I wonder if some of these people just don't know what a segue is. Like, are they just not getting that? That's what we're talking about in the song. Yeah, so, I don't know. Well, and, and, and I may have mentioned this before too. And this is this is irrelevant. We can cut this if we want. But I've um, it, when I when I run down by the bayou, and I'm pointing that way in case you want to know where to. Um, when I run down by the way, yeah, when the, uh, 
you know, and, and you see those, you see those line of segues, a bunch of people on segways and they've all got helmets on. They're, they're, they're going about as, man, as, as fast as molasses on a cold day. I mean, they're just, they're, you know, and, and they're, but they look like they're on a roller coaster. You know, it, nothing matches, you know, <laughs> helmet really for a, you know, for essentially a wheelchair on a, you know, on a just slow a, moving, a stand up wheelchair. You know, right yeah, there, yeah. Just awful. Anyway. So, so th- those things are offensive on every level. And the, 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 I, I guess the most ironic thing is that guy that invented them died from, uh, from, he drove right. a Segway off a cliff. I was like, perfect. Perfect. Now can we get rid of them all? Can we, you know, can we burn them in a big fire? But no. it, it sounds like a skit that Eric Idle wrote. It doesn't even sound like reality. Yeah. Yeah. Very, 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 very funny. So anyway, so, so we've gone too far. Uh, we've gone too far on that. So Eric, give us, give us that funny, uh, give us that funny wagon wheel story. So, you know, a couple of years ago, a couple of years ago, I mean, more than, more than I can't even count now, but um, you know, um, Darius Rucker, uh, mm-hmm. from Hootie and the Blowfish, uh, a black singer songwriter decided to go country. Mm-hmm. And one of his, uh, huge hits was he had released, he had recorded and released a version of wagon wheel, mm-hmm. which is not different than any, most any other version that's out there. It's very medium tempo kind mm-hmm. of thing. A couple of years before that, a band called the old crow medicine show had released a version of wagon wheel as well. So there's two, this is back when I was living in Austin. So there's two mainstream, well, sort of mainstream country stations up there. One, I can't remember the name of it, but one is was called Coke FM, K-O-K-E-F-M. And the long time, the long time guys at um, KVET, which is the old country music station, defected and they started this new radio station. Well, to make a longer story longer, the, 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 when, when the Darius Rucker version came out, the new station with the old country guys refused to play the Darius Rucker re- song. I can't imagine why. <laughs> and so in order to stay current, they would pull out the old Crow Medicine Show song from eight years ago or whatever. So every time Darius was playing on the new station, these guys were pulling out the old Crow song to, to, to counteract the, the effect. Jeez. of that popular song so yeah way to go yeah. guys God. guys yeah way to go it's just it's just again one of those songs that just gets it's been so overplayed to the point oh, that I, I, yeah it, it's, this, totally it's overplayed. like needles in my eyes it's like you racist just, motherfuckers yeah <laughs> <laughs> we're not playing any black country guys oh yeah yeah well, that, country that's, guys is, that's, is a loose term that is yeah. pretty nakedly obvious there anyway so there goes uh there goes segue <laughs> Going right down the highway. Yeah. Yeah. So that it? We're done. Good. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. Speaking uh, of riding down, down the highway. Awesome. Yeah. On this, uh, not the not the last time we were out of town, but the, our two week tour that we did before that, we had several long drives that we took uh, two or three times during the tour. It was like ten, ten, eight, anywhere from eight to twelve hours, right, at a time. Couple. Uh, the the listening item of choice. During those rides, turned out to be Bruce Springsteen's audiobook. That um, we never finished that. We never finished it. I think we got about halfway through it. it he like, is a wordy motherfucker. I go. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I knew that by the songs, but woo. But I was kind of surprised that that well, that Patrick wanted to keep listening to it, and I, I and you 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 were awake for almost the entire time it was playing too, right? I, I, I was hear you commenting behind it. me. I was like, oh, Eric's still awake too. Yeah. So I, I was. There's something about it that that's just riveting and it's 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 uh we're patrick and i were talking about this before he, he came on that his his lyrics you know he's a brilliant lyricist it's obviously one of the things that why one of the reasons why he's so legendary but that comes out in the way that he writes his prose um um and it's just so eloquent and but like you know he, he manages to cut deep with these analogies that he comes up with and it's, that was there in the very first uh segment that we listened to yeah and yeah, little Stephen has a new uh, book out as well, which I'm going to read. I wasn't I wasn't intending on it, but I've heard I've uh, heard a couple of interviews that he's done for it, and I'm interested now in the 
menage a trois. No, yeah. no it's, it's just a lot of a, a lot of a lot of really good stories. But again, another you know deep, eloquent you know get you know just uh, well, I wasn't I wasn't a fan of much of the music. You know, I, there was a lot. <laughs> the, those <laughs> album covers seem to. Uh, yeah, I don't like those those you know the uh, close up you know album covers with a lot of makeup and all that stuff. You know, so that's uh, no leave that for Kiss and leave that and the you know wipe your feet on that crap. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to to reading that. And cool. um, of course, you know we talked before about the David E. Roth book and whatnot. You know, mm-hmm. just really fun. As they lived, they write, and as they write, they in in. in, in you know, I guess in a sense, they just, they show you the, the, the way they write. They just give you a really, really n- nice look into the back of the, of the, you know, the behind mm-hmm. the screen. Yeah. It's very cool. I wonder yeah. if uh, little Steven's going to read his book, like Bruce Springsteen read his book. I hope so. God, that'd be fucking wild. Wouldn't it? So anyway, I was walking down the street <laughs> and then I... <laughs> yeah. And we, it was, I, I couldn't help myself at one point in the tour because he was talking. There's a lot of stuff about, and, and Bruce, going back to Bruce's book, talking about his early work. And uh, so I'd never really listened to his first albums before. So I got to hear this stuff. Ooh. So we listened to it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, uh, he, he was a diamond in the rough. Let's just say that back then. It was because uh, we'd listened to Bruce in the, in the band before. Uh, Patrick had a, a greatest hits collection that he was, that I've he's listened to them, a lot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And they're, I mean, they're, I love that stuff too. Even some of the early stuff, like uh, you know, Born to Run, and um, I don't know what the other was I'm trying to think, Thunder Road, and all that stuff. Uh, Riding but that, wheel. Why can we? But that that first record has some stuff where it's just like he wasn't really he he's great words, really really great lyrics, but he really wasn't big on melody yet at that point or, or song structure either. It was just kind of like Dylan without with no walls or no no you know what I mean, just like yeah. sort of like unfiltered. Dylan with no structure or anything. The uh, the the comment he kept coming. He, he said a couple times, which I was just kind of like, huh. What well, and and Chad, I think I might might have brought this up in the van was the fact that he, um, how he described himself as a guitar player, and I was like, really? I mean, we're pickings kind of slim in New Jersey in the seventies. I mean, was there no one else that was playing guitar at that time? Nothing against Bruce. I mean, he's fucking Bruce Springsteen. I mean, I'm not I'm not, yeah. I'm not knocking him for being whatever but it just seemed kind of interesting that he was like i was the f- he's like i was the fastest i was the best my, oh, may, my, may, my my ears perked up when he said that may, maybe in your kitchen around dinner time yeah i mean but <laughs> yeah. i mean what about what, if, what if, there's got to be somebody else that's good it, it, maybe they're not playing on the jersey shore maybe they're playing in steely dan or maybe they're playing you know, right. maybe they're playing in a totally different band that you don't even know about right but but obviously I mean, you get, you know, you get people like Niels Lofgren in that band and it's just like, okay, now, now you solo, you go ahead, you do the solo now, you got it. Yeah. I yeah. always, that always was shocking to me when I would watch a show and Bruce would take the solo and I was like, uh, do you know who's standing to your right? <laughs> do you know that guy over there? Yeah. And that guy is just, not just musically, not just musically a beast, but a, 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 as far as a stage show goes, you can put that guy on the stage on his own. He is a complete and total musician and showman, but showman as good as he can play. It's, you know, there's, there's very, very few people that come to mind when you think of showman lead guitar players like that, that, you know, that, that are so their, their, their passion and everything is shown in, as they're not just in the notes, but in the way they perform. And the top of the top of my head would be Gary Moore, Roy Gallagher, Nils Lofgren, you know, as, as, you know, Eddie Van Halen too. I mean, you know, you never mm-hmm. saw that guy. You never saw that guy with a frown. Yeah. You never saw mm-hmm. him looking down at the floor. You never saw him, you know, these, these guys are performers. Every note that they play is you can see it here and you can definitely see it here. And, you know, the guitar, I believe is the most expressive instrument on the planet. There's no, um, you know, so when you see a, a person that can perform at the same level that they can play is mm-hmm. something to behold. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Sure. Too long on that. No, that's great. Yeah. Uh, so was, was something else. Was so speaking say. of bios, weren't you going to talk about something else about bios? Yeah. Oh, bio. So, yeah, yeah, we were mentioning about the, the, <laughs> these, these biopics, you know, where they get this 
you know, essentially this monkey that, you know, that, that just doesn't look or sound or has anything to do with the, with the, uh, the, the performer or the band or whatever, you know, so you get this. Um, and the only one I can think of off the top of my head is that queen movie. And they had that Rami Malek play Freddie, mm-hmm. which just don't, just don't try to, don't try it. I, I, I didn't see the movie. I won't watch it. Um, it's good. It's actually really good. I don't believe you. Yeah, despite 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 your your biases about um, no one's going to play Freddie Mercury. No one yeah, can. That, yeah, we, that's what I mean. We, exactly. we, we, we've, had you, that, we've had that discussion before, where it's like, don't don't try. But you know, Brian and Brian and Roger were behind were behind it, and and they had you know they were there every step of the way. So yeah, you can never ever replace it. But for what it is, it's it's, it's decent entertainment. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I, I'll take your word for it. Um, however, the you know get you know get uh, Celine Dion to play it, and then just <laughs> you know and, and don't and don't you know don't don't even don't even try to reenact the you know show the clips, do the clips. But you know if you're going to make a movie, then just you know. But the the I, I think I said it before, but the the only person that I've ever seen do a really good job, and somebody was Kurt Russell playing Elvis. You know the um, that Kevin Costner movie they did uh, it was absolutely brilliant. I mean, uh, as, I, what was the name of the movie? Some, you know? Thousand Five miles thousand, of, thousand miles uh, to Graceland. Yeah, I think so. I'm going to go look that up. Yeah, yeah, very, very, very entertaining. But uh, he plays a brilliant Elvis. And then uh, the other guy that did um, oh, I'm drawing a blank. Anyway, there, there, there's been there's been one or two people that have done a decent Elvis, but not to where you you know like um, there's been there've been many 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 Elvis movies or you know biopics or whatever they are made, and they're just awful. Yeah, this guy, you know, you 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 know your your grandmother cooking looks more like Elvis than these you know than these twats that they had <laughs> right. trying to you know and they're trying to do the voice and the inflections and this stuff like that you know. You, you know, you've got no, you've got, there's, there's just nobody that can, there's nobody that can, you know, that, that can play that. There's just so, these voices are so distinctive and they're so unique. Just do it, just, you know, stand to the side and then do something completely, mm-hmm. you know, ambiguous and, uh, you yeah. know, if, if that's what, if that's what you're going for, but don't try to recreate these people. Freddie fucking Mercury. Are you kidding me? There's no, there's yeah. no, no. No, no. For that, me, the the most egregious one that I've seen recently was the uh, was the uh, James Brown one. I haven't seen um, that one. Oh, that I kid, shudder. That kid that the kid that played Black Panther, which I mean, Black Panther was fucking. I mean, as far as I watched that movie, because it just felt like I had to. And oh, and Chadwick he was great Boseman. in that movie. Yeah. What's his name? Chadwick Boseman. Chadwick Boseman. Yeah. He died last and, year, and he yeah. was great. I mean, in yeah. Black Panther, he was fantastic. And for what for what that movie is, yeah, that Marvel thing, yeah. Um, but yeah, playing James Brown and get on up. Not sorry, dude. Not hitting it. He did, yeah, he did the whole voice and everything, and it was just not only was it was just like ugh, but it was also kind of hard to understand him sometimes. <laughs> like what? <laughs> what are you saying? I uh, think I guess sorry. that's what it's one of the problems ahead, with uh, yeah. Sorry that that I think biopics in general, no matter who the subject is, tend to be on the whole probably pretty bad, right? But I guess I guess the the problem that music. Well, there's two problems I can think of with with music biopics is that it's it's that when when you have you're you're re- trying to recreate something that has a very um, palpable um, quality to people because they they grew up with the music or they know and they they love sure. the artist and all that stuff and you're trying to recreate something that's even I think a little bit even more tangible than just an actor's performance or a historical person's performance. So that alone, like you're saying, that's that's Patrick's problem with if the Freddie Mercury even movie even existing, right? So it's just you're you're kind of it's kind of an impossible task to begin with, but there's also this most of the, beyond that most of the movies I've seen most of the music biopics I've seen really have a hard time depicting what happens when music is created. It's always like, hey guys, I got this idea, and they go, okay, and they join in it. It's instantly the song that that's recording. You know what I mean? It sounds perfect, like right off the bat, and the, it takes a few seconds for them to come up with it. That type of thing. And it just, Did you ever see that? Um... That Beatles one that was on TV about a thousand years ago, back in the seventies, probably. Um, Dick Clark produced it, and it was about them, like just starting out. 
Was and it the birth of the Beatles? Pete, how Pete Best was in the band, and then they went over to Hamburg to play, mm-hmm. and then they came back, and Stu Sutcliffe was uh, in, in it for a minute, and then it basically ends when they land in New York. For, for Ed, Ed, did you ever see that one? I, can't I think I have, yeah. Yeah. I, that one was that one's kind of interesting because yeah. um, it sort of shows like the, a little bit more of the grittiness. Like it shows him in Hamburg with like John walking into the into the bar or to, up to the stage with the toilet seat around his head, mm-hmm. which apparently was a true story. Yeah. And you know the whole thing, the whole Ringo thing about them going to the cavern to play, and they were all booing him. And, and mm-hmm. I mean that was sort of made up that he did, he did this crazy he did this crazy like. Like super fast, thing yeah. on the snare drum, and, yeah, and they were like, "Yay, we love you now!" Right? I mean, whatever. Right. But I, I thought that I, I think like that one. I think like the Karen Carpenter story was good because you can sort of fake a British accent and kind of get away with it. I think. Look at look at his face, and Karen Carpenter. She didn't really have an accent, so I think of course these are made for TV movies too. These weren't like you know big big Hollywood releases, but to your point. The one thing I do when I watch these movies is I look at the drum set and I see how historically accurate it is. Like if it's from the 1960s, it better look like a 1960s drum set. Yeah. Or the symbols better not have a logo right. on them because yeah. they didn't have logos <laughs> on them. So that's what kind of asshole I am when I watch. The, oh, the drum set's not right. Fuck this movie. Nope. So yeah. nope. Nope. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Way to go, guys. But you have to. Yeah, you got. You have to. Uh, you have to see the. You have to. You know. You have. Well, we're we're. We're watching and listening from a whole different perspective. Every, you know, yeah, doesn't true. matter. Doesn't matter who and what and where and why. We, you know, we we're we're already soiled when it comes to the, the that that experience. Um, but I I didn't see that one. But I remember back in the MTV VH1 days when they. I'm sure they're still around, but I I, I don't have a TV, so they're all dead to me. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the, the the they would do these t- these made for TV. I mean, they're actually <laughs> made for the toilet. Um, uh, the, the, these shows about, they had uh, Def Leppard and um, all these just crappy bands and they would do these stories and they would get these actors that you, you, you're saying, <laughs> you're saying it's easy to do a British accent. Yeah. Maybe if the Geico fucking lizard or something, but yeah, those, those accents are so, de- you know, w- when you're trying to do, Sheffield or Yorkshire, or you're trying to do even New- Newcastle or, or or Scotland or Wales, or you're trying to do any of those accents. They're they're very very distinctive, but again, not maybe not in Alabama. Maybe they wouldn't be able to tell you know <laughs> London from you know when I mean from Birmingham to you know these accents are so we knew them because we always we, you know we grew up with people from all different parts of England and Ireland and Scotland, whatever. But uh, these movies would come on and they're just, they're not just poorly acted and low budget, but <laughs> they would all give everybody the same Geico commercial accent, English accent. Oh man, gee, sir. You know, they're just <laughs> like the worst Monty Python skit. You know, where those guys are making fun of their own accents. These guys would have as a regular thing. So you're watching these people, essentially with a comedic delivery, you know, executing these lines of, you know, that that's, you know, these, these terrible. Was this a, was this a, a, a VH1, like a, a series where they're reenacting historical events or was it an actual biopic about Jeff Leppard type of thing? Yeah. I, I think it was biopics. Biopics. Okay. There was one they did about the, the PMRC uh, uh, thing and that kid from a kid from, uh, 90210, Jason Priestley. Jason Priestley? Is that his name? Not the one that died, the other one. Anyway, he played the lawyer, and they had a guy playing Frank Zappa and a guy playing John Denver, oh. and D. Schneider played himself. Interesting. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> was that any good? I mean, it was entertaining. Yeah. I mean, they basically, they basically made it out to be like, you know, Frank Zappa and um, D. Schneider didn't trust John Denver. Mm-hmm. They thought he was going to be. They thought that he was going to side with the, with with the panel, and of course he didn't. But um, but it was just funny because it was like you know Frank Zappa was kind of like the main character, and always talking to the lawyer, and 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 the guy that played him was you know I mean, whatever. But he was very, you know, sarcastic. Very, I guess thought that that's how Frank was because the way he talks, like he was when Frank was just being honest all the time. And of course, mm-hmm. D. Schneider playing himself was 
interesting, but whatever. I forget. I forget that what, what it was called, but it, it was it was entertaining. I mean, because you know, I we, we all grew up. I grew up watching that that thing intently when it was out there. Yeah. I was reading the newspaper every day and reading the Rolling Stone articles and, and watching it on the news all the time to be like, what the fuck is this all about? Kind yeah. Of, yeah. Yeah. Those the clips of, of Frank Zappa's testimony in particular are are legion or are, are yeah. legendary on YouTube. And they pop yeah, up. that and you know, you know, D. Schneider kind of you know, Frank was more of the um I can't, I can't describe, well, we all know how he was, but D Schneider was kind of the hammer, the hammer, like mm-hmm. walking yes. in like, fuck you guys and fuck this. And this is fucking bullshit. And then John Denver turns out to be the one that like, yeah, this is wrong. They shouldn't do this. Yeah. You know, this is, this is, this is, this, I mean, they all, they all said that, but the way John said it was just like this fucking guy, you know, yeah. like, like he's, he's the one that they were all expecting to be like, oh, he's on our side. He's going to totally agree with us. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. That's the one I don't think I've seen John Denver's testimony. It's funny. I, I saw yeah. a conversation be, about this on YouTube recently where somebody said, Oh, John Denver was there. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, yeah, it's, it's got, yeah. It's, I, I think, I, I, yeah, I don't, I think it's got to be out there because if Frank's testimony is on there, you got to have D Schneider's and, and, uh, and John Denver's. I mean, it's got to be out there somewhere. Yeah. Somebody's seen it. Yeah. Did um, we get a, did we get a label on our record? We, I know. We, 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 yeah, they didn't put it. I did put, What's the word? Parent, parental advisory in a couple of the songs for, you know, just, just, yeah, just, just let get forewarning, but nobody's complained. So no. uh, forewarning the, how, was it, was there one on rain or shine for how bad the drumming is? <laughs> <laughs> cut that out. Cut that out. Um, uh, speaking yeah, of VH1, hey, sorry, before what? we move on, if speaking of VH1, there was one movie that they put out, which I don't know if it was the same production company that made the one you were talking about, about Def Leppard and all that stuff. But it was it was uh, surprisingly. I mean, you don't. It, it's hard to find now. It's, I don't know if you can even watch it online. But it, it was uh, surprisingly good. It was a. Uh, uh, it wasn't really even a real biopic, which I think was one of the reasons why it succeeded. That it was sort of depicting um, a, a night that actually happened in history, but we don't really know what the conversations were on that night. Where it was one of the last times that Paul McCartney visited John Lennon at the Dakota mm-hmm. in New York in the late seventies. And so the, the the movie just depicts this fictional conversation that they had. It's just the two, pretty much just the two of them throughout the whole movie. And it's, I think uh, I remember. I think I remember hearing about that. Yeah, uh, Jared Harris, the son of Richard Harris, plays Lennon. Yeah, and then uh, Aidan Quinn plays Paul McCartney. Did neither of them look anything like the their respective roles? But they do such a great job of portraying those characters. Yeah, um, there and there are a couple shots actually where Jared Harris is in profile. As he's walking around, it's like God. That looks just like the, the manner his mannerisms and his body language. There's, and you just, it's it's uncanny, but it's it's really actually quite good uh, film. I suppose it's so, a benefit to a lot of people yeah. that want to do um, biopics of, of of bands at least from maybe the fifties on, because generally, there if it's something someone that was popular, there be there would be a lot of footage of 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 that band or that person, like like you know, the Beatles or Elvis or, or we mentioned Johnny Cash and stuff like that. I mean, there's enough footage out there that you could watch it and kind of learn the mannerisms or learn at least how they hold the guitar or, or, or whatever. But yeah, I think one of the best biopics uh, about a band is, is one that doesn't even, it's the band that never existed is that, that movie by Tom Hanks, that thing you do. I mean, it kind of, no, don't make that face, Patrick. I mean, because basically to your point, Chad, it shows a band like, kind of starting out and how terrible they were mm-hmm. and then it, it kind of it sends how actually good they became and, yeah. and, and that trajectory and then how they fell apart i mean that's as far as depicting like what happens in a real band that's sort of fairly accurate it's yeah. not just like hey we have a song and now we're famous yeah it was like yeah oh, this we're, we're fucking terrible and mm-hmm. you know we changed the song and, and, and whatever but yeah but and that's not even about a real band yeah i, I do like yeah. the ending in that movie too where the guy the guy goes in he's kind of despondent because the whole band is just imploded. The, the one guy is a songwriter who's left and he goes and he's in the recording studio and there's this old jazz cat on the drums. He says, Hey man, you know, he kind of talks him down and they, they just kind of bond on like why they're in this business to begin with. Well, the drummer, the drummer was the guy that liked jazz. So he was, he was the jazz guy. Right, and then once, right. once, once, once the, the singer like says, I quit and he leaves the thing. He's just fucking off on the drums, and his hero walks. Oh, that's right. In. The drummer is the guy. Okay, yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. Sorry. The, and his his jazz hero walks. In. Hey, let's play something, and so yeah. they play it, and, and then of course his 
path goes on a different tra- trajectory. But anyway. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Sorry, Pat. Yeah. Sorry. The, what, the, I mean, I never saw that. I'm just not a Tom Hanks fan, so I wouldn't have watched it nor nor any interest in it. But that uh, that that's again that 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 sounds interesting. The you know the fact that they don't just go walk into a studio and everybody's great and they're, then they're you know that that, that stuff just drives me up the fucking mm-hmm. wall. And we've seen it firsthand. We've seen. We've seen those bands. We've played with those bands. We've been in those bands where it's just been everybody here needs to fucking take a, you know, a, a, a pill and go, go, you know, go, go die. But, yeah. um, yeah. So, I mean, so, so just, all, so gun to your head, you got to pick somebody, right. And they're going to make a, they're going to make a Lemmy movie today. Who do you get to play Lemmy? <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. There you go. Uh... And I got another one right behind it. So, do you do you do you have a do you have an actor in mind, Patrick? No, I don't. Oh, okay. I don't. I don't know if you're gonna if you're gonna uh, you know turn the tables on us here. There is a guy I don't know his name. He's plays. He's famous for playing villains. Um, Javier Bardem. You know who would be good, but he's he's passed away now. Is um, Alan Rickman? I think would do. You picture him is with that. Is he tall enough? I don't know. Was he? <laughs> <laughs> Put some lifts in those boots. Um, yeah. you need somebody with that, that haggard. Oh, uh, it's, Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy could do it. Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy that's a good one. That's a good Tom, one. Tom Hardy. He played, uh, well, he played Bane and Batman. He played Venom and Venom. Um, he's been, he's done a bunch of stuff. He played was that. He, was he in uh, Peaky Blinders? I, I think he was probably. Yeah. Yeah. He, I, I don't know if he's tall enough, but he's definitely, his physique is sort of, you know, let me, let me had a really kind of a broad. You know, broad shouldered for Z. Bean, bean pole, yeah. Yeah. So maybe. I mean, he I mean, he's definitely kind of a. I think Tom is one of those kind of, despite his superhero inclinations or whatever you want to call it, um, definitely kind of a methody, methody kind of actor that okay. could probably pull it off. Yeah. All right, Chad, who would play he's David saying, Bowie? I, he can't. Mm. See, this is where I, I have the same opinion of him that you do of, of Freddie Mercury. Is like, then people have tried. It's like, just, you can't. He, he, he was. He, that and so much of his mystique was the way he looked, you know, and I, I, I don't know. I, I can't really think of anybody who, who that I know as an actor who could pull off somebody I, really skinny. Yeah. I was going to say Shelley Long, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, probably, I don't, probably probably some of these younger actors that are that are you know that, that have that kind of waif like feature. And that, yeah. that, that would be, it, there's, there hasn't been one yet, but the, there, the portrayals of Bowie I've seen so far have been just ridiculous in that you, made by people who don't, who, who, who would like the, the kind of vibe on one aspect of Bowie, like the, the posing part of him and the, yeah. and the makeup and the glam, but they don't really get his, his, his more complex, you know, all the complexities of his character and how well read he was and how you know most of what he did was was theater you know and it's i see a lot of it just it bugs me to no end that they, they they just portray him as this kind of tarty british guy uh when he was so much more so much more complex than that so i hope I, I don't know I, it hasn't been done yet i'm sure if somebody's going to attempt it if they're not working on it already since he died fairly recently have you played know. that cd uh collection you bought in omaha yet <laughs> I haven't. I haven't. Yeah, I need to listen to it. Shame on you. I know. Yeah. So I. Well, I. I think. I think we're get. We're. We're, we're about to hit the mark here. But I. I, I think we should. Um, I think we, we should definitely carry on in this. You know, and maybe even. You know, for for the future, have a. Uh, have a. Uh, a little bit more more in 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 depth discussion on on this. Mm-hmm. this topic i i think it's it's kind of endless you know especially with the i, I want to read the 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 little Stephen biography and and i want to just uh you know just just kind of get into that a little bit more but just fyi you know coming up we, we there's there's a lot of stuff that we're uh we're working on as usual um read that read that review if you're interested that we're, we're still we're only making 200 vinyl records and then they're gone so we're we're uh, we have a few left and um just you know be sure to uh to 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 get your order in if you want that and then um 
Uh, Donna just bought two. She's going to frame one, rightly so. And um, uh, mm -hmm. and then uh, thank you, Donna. And then um, also we have our holiday coffee in. We have our um, Sinner Man uh, coffee in, and we're uh, that's available online. Thank you, John. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, and we're going to be doing. Thank you, Eric. We're going to be doing Xmas tunes coming up. So we're going to be re releasing our songs from last year. Maybe we even put a new one out. So depending how fast we can get this shit done. <laughs> so, uh, and then just uh, uh, November fourth, is it? We're gonna um, we're gonna go see Doug Stanhope in Houston at oh, the Improv. So uh, there are some tickets still available for that. Uh, I would highly, highly, highly recommend. I think we would highly, highly, highly recommend uh, going to see that show. It's going to be fabulous. Yeah, I'm really excited for that. It's gonna be so, a Parker. Yeah, and then and then we have an, a couple of all ages shows coming up. We're doing one at Mecca, and we're doing one at the Methodist um, place out in Cyprus. All the the all the information's on the site, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, we we're, we're gonna, be, gonna be a lot of fun coming up. So so we, we're gonna be doing a lot of PG shows, which is uh, I'm I'm um, getting ready. I'm washing my mouth out with soap mm -hmm. daily, so we can get ready for that. <laughs> So should we say heads up, Florida? Might be heading your way. Is we can a... say it. I, I mean, it, I, that's my next call. Once we yeah. once we get through here, I got to call them. But um, everybody's fucking slow to respond in Florida. Well, I, I, yeah, could happen. May very well happen. And I just I was going to say this at the beginning of the show too. It's just that there's, especially in the past couple of weeks after after the trip up to West End, coming back from that tour and everything, there's a real palpable sense that things are finally kind of getting back up to speed. Um, What's that? That's twice you've used that word today. Palpable, yes. Mm -hmm. Three times. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll stop. <laughs> guys, 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 count down. Guys, guys who's, who's counting words over here? <laughs> um, yeah, anyway. There's I'm, a real I'm, sense I'm, of I'm, us uh, excitement. I'm very happy of, to be busy, yeah. be, to be actually working, and I feel kind of like, yeah. okay, we're back. You know, I think I think someone, uh, as Chad was saying before I, I rudely interrupted him, there is some momentum building, at least with the three of us, about how the trio is performing live and, and how it's being well, very well received by not only fans, but also uh, the venue owners themselves. So it's it definitely a, a, a good sign for us to be able to move forward and, and, and feel confident booking more shows and, and more, more uh, short tour, <clears throat> tours here and there. So yeah, I think 2022 will be our, be a, a breakout uh, year for us for sure. Yeah. 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 And new new songs coming and all that crap. So uh, yeah, just you know, just um, hit the uh, hit the website and check it all out. And we're, we're just uh, can't wait to see you. Can't wait to play for you. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Double thumbs up. Thank you, indeed. All right, kids. We'll see Bye. you next week. Okay. <laughs>